from an athlete standpoint, I've been a professional cross player for over a decade now, um, playing professionally and then also men's national team. Entrepreneur side, I've been running instructional businesses for the past over a decade now. Pretty much as soon as I could walk, I was always uh, playing soccer. Well, that was my big sport growing up. Uh, my dad got me into soccer. My dad also played lacrosse in high school, um, but I was a big soccer player growing up. When I got to high school, uh, our coach wanted to recruit athletes at the soccer, football, basketball, pretty much all the sports at the high school. Uh, and as soon as I got a lacrosse stick in my hand, I was addicted to it. After my soccer season was over, I knew I wanted to play lacrosse in college. and. Um, only played lacrosse in college and kind of put soccer behind me, but from an athletic standpoint, soccer really, I think, built my athleticism as an athlete coming from high school playing that sport and rolling over into lacrosse. They say it's the fastest game on two feet, so the ball, you know, with our shot clocks that we have, it's constant running up and down the field, similar to soccer, and then when we wear helmets, we whack each other with sticks, so that's your football component hitting, we're allowed to hit each other just like you would in football, and you'll have to slash guys with the stick and try to dislodge the ball as well, so it's kind of, um, you know, obviously soccer with the running component of it and moving the ball. And then um, when you can hit someone, it's just like football. You can hit as hard as you want. And it's a very physical sport. So, you know, in college, you're practicing five days a week. And then we get professional level, you know, you're off season, you're by yourself. So you need to, obviously, I have uh, some of the best trainers in the world. Um, Jay Dyer, who I worked with for over a decade in Baltimore and East Coast. And then moving here to California in February, I moved over to Doug Gizzy, uh, who we worked with, out with this morning. Jay is a big reason why I'm still playing today at a high level, and Doug's also having him added to what we're doing today has also helped me out a lot. Because having those trainers, they're always on you to work out, and they're always pushing you in the workouts. But when you're by yourself, you got to have the right mentality to get in the gym every day. Because if you're not doing it every day, your career is going to be really short, and the next guy is going to get past you. Um, with Doug, I'm usually three to four days a week, and then outside of that, um, with Mike, twice a week. Where we're going to next, uh, doing all the mobility stuff. Um, I'm kind of lifting uh, two to three days on my own, but Doug gives me a lot of my programming uh, for my lifts. And uh, but everything I do with him is everything I need to work on from a movement standpoint, speed and agility, which is like the biggest thing in our game. Um, so uh, all of my footwork and stuff I do with Doug. I'm Doug Gizzy, and I work with a lot of different athletes, individuals, uh, kind of in the realm of performance enhancement. Uh, so looking to get him performing better and what we kind of look at is various components of athletic athleticism and getting them to move better being stable being in positions to react very quickly uh, in a very uh, unpredictable environment which is the sport of lacrosse and kind of focus on specific movement he has to do is shuffling opening his hips uh, and changing direction so we're gonna show a little bit of what we do here to kind of build them uh, up to get ready for the PL. Uh, when do you guys start in May? May. So we, we got plenty of time, but always a time's uh, ticket. Get, can't waste time. For Kyle, being a veteran, we always want to look at keeping him <laughs> as nimble, as mobile as possible. But at the same time, we want to make sure that he's stable as he's developed certain patterns throughout his life and uh, overuse playing the sport we want to kind of continue to give them uh, movement in multi directions just to keep the the joints mobile in all 3ds rather than he's picked up patterns from the position he plays in the sport for these 25 plus years of playing lacrosse um, that we keep them uh, mobile but also we just don't want them all too limber we want some stiffness and we spend a lot of time with coordination stuff so for him to get used to moving while being stable, quickly getting his stability, and going through um, uh, little kind of uh, cues, ideas to keep him quickly to get stable. Uh, and that way, as he gets a little older, as uh, strength, speed goes down a little, we try to be more efficient. So he could be use his technical, strategic intellect and put him in positions to succeed. We're going to take a couple weeks off from this. This is our first day back. It's so great though. I'm working out on flat land in the gym, so I'm in the shape for it. But it's always hard your first time coming back to this because you're used to running on flat ground. We're introduced to the sand now, so uh, my legs are going to be sore tomorrow, but it's good though. <laughs> Definitely speed and agility. That's, I think, my most important thing, right? If, you're, if you can move faster than the guy you're going against, um, that's obviously a very huge advantage for yourself. Um, we've obviously implemented a ton of mobility work into that stuff because running and opening your hips is a big component of lacrosse. I'm always like into a back pedal, I open my hips up and I'm running with a guy. So um, having a mobility component, you know, keep my hips loose, my back loose. Um, when I get into game week, that's huge. Um, nutrition recovery uh, has been a big 
big uh, focus of mine now, um, just because I'm getting older and really need to hone in on that. Because as you get older, it takes longer to recover from workouts and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm kind of hitting all those pillars, you know, from a speed and agility standpoint, strength conditioning, uh, mobility, and then getting rest and recovery are probably the, the four biggest ones uh, I focus on. I think I'm just really scared of retirement um, from a not playing anymore standpoint. I've really thought about that and like what that looks like for me. I think the day I retire, it's going to be pretty depressing the day after. I might need to get a therapist for that one. But uh, I think that one motivates me to keep playing because it's like, I'll be fine after that. If I could, a couple weeks go by, I'll be fine. But um, I'm a very competitive person and not having that um, competitive you know, nature anymore um, will be kind of weird for me because I've been doing it. You know, since I was in high school, um, and you know, I didn't have a really had a really rough road to get where I'm at. I played, you know, junior college. I wasn't recruited, um, so I kind of had to work work my ass off to get where I'm at. But um, I think just having the mentality of not wanting to stop playing and wanting to be the best and keep being the best uh, is what motivates me. You know, when I was younger, in my 20s, I kind of just ate whatever the heck I wanted. Um, kind of got away with it. Um, from the amount I work out, I kind of get away. I can get away with it today. But um, I focus a lot more on nutrition. You know, I eat like lean meats, vegetables. Um, get my protein shakes in me, um, kind of just eat as clean as I possibly can. It's kind of hard with all the traveling we do. I kind of, you know, I bring, I pack food with me when I go on some of my trips. Um, but I think the more you eat clean, the better off you're going to be. Um, and, you know, having the nutrition standpoint of all the, obviously my strength conditioning trainers, they recommend a lot of stuff diet-wise, what I should be eating, what I should be doing, how much protein I should be intaking, carbohydrates, um, all that good stuff. And also a lot of stuff we have at our fingertips now from podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts and um, kind of educate myself on it because at the end of the day, I'm not a nutritionist, but I have a lot of people I trust um, on my team and um, you know, they point me in the right direction. Also just educating yourself. But I got away with a lot of eating fast food and stuff like that when I was younger. And as I probably like went 25 and up, I've kind of been watching what I'm eating and kind of really focusing on staying clean and I do a lot of supplementation, you know, obviously with momentum, I'm always making shit. My big thing is getting up early in the morning, I'm making a shake, put a bunch of fruit in it. Then, you know, making shakes in the morning, I kind of uh, work out, I'll eat a meal after that, usually shake in the midday and then shake at night before I go to bed. Um, but, you know, that's that's huge because I don't like to cook six meals a day. So I usually eat three meals a day and then supplement those protein shakes um, throughout the day. Also on the road, I usually put protein powder in a bag and then it's a six hour flight, I'm always, you know, supplement. Uh, Make sure I'm getting my shakes in on the flight or when I'm landing and I don't have time to eat before practice, I make sure I'm getting those supplements in me to kind of, you know, um, step in for a meal I'm missing. So I, I do a lot of that. I mean, it was tough to navigate like through college. I mean, you get a you get a protein jug where it is, there's 7,000 ingredients. I didn't know what the hell they were. Um, also pre-workout was huge into taking. There's a lot of amphetamines and stuff in that and a lot of bad stuff. Like I'd be taking it during the game because everybody else in the locker room would start shaking before the game starts. So probably not good for you. Um, but as I've gotten older, um, you know, protein, you know, before I came across Live Momentus, uh, taking proteins that have the less ingredients are better because I know I can research three ingredients rather than 60. Um, and then also the big thing with Live Momentus is they're NSF uh, certified. So having that on the label, I'm not worried when I go from international competition because we get tested a lot. I'm not worried about failing a drug test for that, taking those supplements with the NSF logo on it. Um, so having Live Momentus has been great because the, the ingredients that are in that in that bottle or I know exactly what they are and I know exactly where they're coming from. And I think with the, the it's very cloudy because it's not FDA approved. A lot of the stuff out there is not FDA approved and people just bottle stuff up and say it does this and at the end of the day it could be hurting you. So um, I think it's a cloudy, uh, the supplementation world is a uh, cloudy realm and um, having a company like Live Momentus has been huge because I know exactly what I'm putting in my body. 34 years old, I wanna play until I'm 40. So that's the long-term plan right there, playing until I'm 40. Um, and next year, just kind of, you know, year by year, I'm always implementing something new into my training and figuring out um, things that make me better. Um, but yeah, year, I want to get better every year. That's a goal of mine every single year. Um, from a business standpoint, I'm always trying to, you know, excelling, going to new cities and doing uh, clinics in new cities. That's a big goal of mine is every year go somewhere new um, and teach kids that don't necessarily get us all the time. Um, but yeah, I think just continuing to play this game at a high level is a big goal of mine every year. And, you know, that's, it's my entire life. It's been my entire life for a very long time. So I think the biggest thing I'm trying to do every year is just keep getting better and keep playing the sport until my legs don't work.